guys. So I was in my garden a little earlier and I didn't feel like doing all the things <laughs> uh, to come on. And I wanted to come on while it was, you know, fresh and, um, you know, on my heart. So one of the sessions inside uh, 3D Success Academy is on communication. And the reason why I included that in the you know mentorship mindset and branding uh, process is because of what I learned about communication over time and how I'm constantly um, mindful to be improving on it even now, right? But I want to share with you all how I first became aware that I was not a good communicator. And um, it, it made me kind of like step back and reflect, but it was, you know, at a time where I was with um, my mentor, well, one of my mentors. And, and I'm so glad that although I wasn't an excellent communicator, I was able to hear her, right? Because a lot of times in mentoring, um, it's sometimes difficult for the mentee to hear that, you know, there's something that they need to do different or that they need to change. They're oftentimes um, offended before they are um, affected in the proper way. And, but all of that has to also do with our, you know, state of, you know, emotions and our emotional intelligence during that particular season. And I think I was able to hear what she had to say because I came from a household, you know, where my mom didn't take shorts. <laughs> about um, you know, her position as parent and my position as child. And so, you know, I, I listened. Whether I wanted to hear it or not, I listened. And so I kind of took that over with me into, you know, other spaces that allowed me to grow. And I'm going to share that with you all. I'm going to do a quick introduction. We got a couple rules on this camp. Yes, I'm on again. Say hello. Maisha. Hey, girl. Hey. Listen, are you a coach, teacher, trainer, leader? Team leader, this one is really, really good. These are the things that many people overlook in their uh, business and brand building process, and they usually come back to haunt them. They usually come back to haunt them. And they, they'll, they won't know, like, what was the thing that kind of didn't go well? What didn't go right? Um, communication is one of those skills that we often overlook. But I know that it's powerful, it's impactful, and it's important. Uh, reason being that I included it in my Mentorship Mindset and Branding Academy, 3D Success Academy. Okay, a couple rules around here. If this isn't your first time at the rodeo, many of you, I know it's not your first time at the rodeo, put hashtag renew in the comments. If you're catching me on the replay, put hashtag replay. If this is your first time on a live training with me, put your name in the comments. Let me know what type of business you you run, how you serve in the marketplace. What are your superpowers? If you don't know your superpower, baby, you need to learn your superpower. You need to connect with me. It's one of the things that's going to shift the way that you build your business. Now, I know you may have figured out your target market, your um, ideal customer, but when you figure out your superpower and your perfect people, it's on a whole nother level. And that's one of the things I help my clients do as a transformational growth strategist, business coach, and mentor. I help my clients build brands that profit more. Can I get an amen, Maisha? <laughs> um, I'm just so blessed by some of the uh, testimonies that I'm getting from my clients. I mean, I'm just, I don't know. When you hit, there's a certain level that you hit in coaching where it's just complete fulfillment when, you know, you're able to see your clients soaring. Um, especially in their personal economy and getting their business right because it impacts their family, it impacts their emotional health, um, it impacts everything, guys. Every, 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 everything when a woman is able to step into higher realms in her personal economy. And if you followed me before, you know that personal economy includes more than your finances, but baby, it includes your going to, okay? It includes your going to. So I am the founder of 3D Success Academy for women in business. Um, I teach from a three-point perspective, abundance mindset. Listen, if you connect with me, we're going up, right? 
We removing lack. We breaking the walls of your money ceiling. Do you guys even know what your money ceiling is? Listen, if you don't know what your money ceiling is, when we finish with this broadcast, go to renewfullcircle.com slash 3DA. When you get on that landing page, um, listen to the video that's on that page. It kind of talks about, you know, what your money ceiling is. But most of us have this thing over the top of our head that's keeping us from our next level. It's like we have this desire in our heart, but getting there is something completely different. Leticia, how are you? Hey guys, are you a coach, teacher, trainer, leader, um, team leader? What is it that you do? Put that in the comments as you come on with us this evening. But I teach from a three-point perspective, abundance mindset. Listen, there is no lack of clients. There is no lack of resources. There is no lack of money. There is no lack of time for whatever it is that you need to do. Yes, RenewfulCircle.com, but it's all together. Might you put it in the comments for me. Thank you guys. And DA is lowercase. I don't know if it's case sensitive. I don't think it's case sensitive. I don't think that's going to matter. But if you go to click that page, RenewfulCircle.com is all together. Thank you so much, beautiful. I appreciate it. So there is no lack. And when, we, when I teach from that space of abundance, it causes people to... Um, step into new spaces of possibility that they did not think about before. And some of those things that are in alignment with new possibility is actually our communication. Because one, what we're saying to ourselves is actually communicating, guys, right? But I wanted to talk to you guys about communicating with other people. Now, when I was first introduced to the fact that I was not a great communicator, it was by one of my mentors. Somebody put mentor. Look, I knew you was going to correct that because she, she want to get that thing right. Okay, guys? And she wants you to be able to go to the right page. Um, somebody put mentor in the comments. You guys have no idea the value of a mentor. Now, what I'm about to share with you all about my experience with my mentor and communication it wasn't necessarily something that I understood fully in that moment, um, but because I respected her, I was willing to dive a little deeper in it. Another, I'm going to share another time with you all where I knew I needed to up-level my communication as well. So anyway, I worked with one of my mentors before, and we were having our one-on-one one -on -one, um, evaluation that she did. I believe it was monthly, and... Um, as she was sharing something with me, I think I either cut her off or I tried to explain why, you know, I knew the answer or whatever. She says to me, she said, you know, you always have an answer for everything. Did y'all hear this? This, I was... In my 20s, I was probably about 23 years old. She was like, when I'm explaining something to you, you're always like talking or sharing what you know. Now, I know as a young 23-year-old, I wanted my mentor to think that she had made an excellent choice in hiring me. And I wanted to, you know, let her know that it was some things that I knew. I wasn't doing it in my heart to be um, necessarily seen as the know-it-all, but I wanted her to know that I knew some things, like some of the things that she was sharing with me, I knew. And that moment, of course, I was driving at that time about an hour and a half from where I was working. And the ride home was spent thinking about it, like really assessing myself, like, do you do this? Like, is this what you do and where is it coming from? Now, I'm 23. I didn't go too far into, uh, you know, learning more about communication. But what I started doing was like being quiet when, especially if, you know, someone who was in a position of authority or um, you, who was mentoring me, who I was trying to get, you know, to learn something at a higher level from, I learned to, to be quiet. And sometimes even when I'm coaching people, I, I realize where it comes from. When you're, you know, explaining something to them and then they're kind of talking over you, it's a part of them that wants you to know, you know, I, I know this, I know this, but we lose out so much, guys, when we are in the presence 
of someone who has years of experience uh, greater than, than we do. And, you know, we're still doing all the talking. In actuality, we lose out uh, regardless of whether we're in the presence of someone who has a lot more experience when we aren't one of the number one things that makes you a great communicator, and that's being a great listener. Somebody put listener in the comments, a great listener. So the number one skill set that a great communicator, if you're planning on coaching, teaching, training, if you're leading in any kind of way, uh, the best skill that you could ever have um, in that position is one of listening. Listening. See, most of, most often when we consider communicating, a lot of times, especially if we're super smart, we got intellectual, you know, in, we're uh, intellectually intelligent, smart, um, you know, maybe we got a few degrees, you know, what I'm saying, certificates and all that stuff. Um, we sometimes think that us being able to talk um, clearly or really, really express ourselves is super important but what's most important before anything is that you become a great listener and as a coach teacher one of the reasons that listening is so important is because if you listen long enough you will hear everything that you need to hear you will save yourself time and energy with the people that you are you know leading or helping or serving in any matter. If you become a good listener, you will, you'll hear what you need to do next. You'll hear what angle to go with with the people that, that you're leading. You'll know what it is that they need and you become the greatest leader because you're serving them at their highest. So the number one skill set that you're going to need for communicating, this is all communicating, is being a great listener. And sometimes, guys, when we are, you know, adamant about something or it's something that we're passionate about or there's something that we really feel deeply in our heart, sometimes when we tell people that, you know, we want to hear what they have to say, we really don't want to hear what they have to say. We really don't. We really want an opportunity to say what we want to say. And when we're waiting in between them speaking, it's really just waiting so that we can be heard instead of um, waiting so that we can hear. A strong leader, a, an excellent coach, a teacher trainer, someone leading a team becomes a good listener, right? You can solve a lot of problems if you're listening. And oftentimes we've been taught to just, you know, vomit stuff out of our mouth, <laughs> um, especially if we have a point that we're attempting to, to make. Another time where I really began to focus on my communication skills, I still work on that all the time, guys. I still check myself. I still um, find ways to be an even better communicator because I understand that my ability to communicate increases my value. Uh, my ability to communicate increases my value. Somebody need to put that in the comments. Your ability to communicate increases your value. And the number one skill set for that is becoming a great listener and not just stopping what you're saying, right? Because many of you stop what you say so that you can get your words in. You ain't really heard nothing that the person has said. And a lot of times when we're really passionate about that, that can very well happen. Um, but another time that it became really important to me was during my marriage. So for those of you who don't know, um, I um, opened a business, had a baby and got opened a business, got married, and had a baby in that order in a three-year time frame. And on top of that, my marriage was dysfunctional. So it was during that beginning stage that I began to learn a whole lot about the fact that our personal life rolls over into our business. And one of the first things that was going to make it better was becoming aware about who I was, what it was I really, really desired, and releasing all of the things that no longer served who I, who I was at that time or who I desired to become. And you guys will hear me talk about decluttering all the time. And sometimes we have to declutter the way we've learned to do things. Sometimes we have to unlearn you know, the way that we've been taught, the way that we've been shown, um, because it can very well be that thing that's keeping you from the next level. So anyway, in my marriage, um, 
when we were going through, when I was, we was going through quite a bit, right? <laughs> but sometimes we were a little more difficult than others. But one of the things that it caused me to do, because my desire was that, you know, my marriage was uh, healed, restored, whatever you want to call it. And so I knew if you ever get to the space where you desire something and you're really honest with yourself, your goal doesn't become um, what's wrong with everything around me, what's wrong with all of the external things around me, you know, the government, all that. You start figuring out what you can do differently. And so that's my center point, like, okay, what can I do differently? Because this is what happens, guys. Even if there are external factors that are impacting you negatively, if you find out what you could do differently and you start doing those things differently and the stuff around you don't change, it's probably time to release some stuff. Okay? So that's kind of how my process um, me. I really began, you know, getting really aware of who I was. And as I began walking in the direction of uh, becoming a better communicator or whatever was missing on my part, nobody else's, right? Um, as I began to grow in those areas and I realized that other stuff wasn't changing, I said, okay, right, it's time to release some things. But during that time, I realized that because I was hurt, um, because my uh, ex was probably hurt, we were trying to be un understood for the level, you know, that or the, for the beliefs that we had. This is why beliefs are so important because when you have two people who are trying to be understood and they don't believe the same, it's, it's really, really, really hard. But one of the things I set out to do was to become a, a better communicator. Uh, during that time, I was like, you know, am I stopping when we're talking so that I can just wait for him to hurry up and finish so I can say what I want to say? Or am I really interested in hearing what he has to say, right? And then taking a moment to sincerely process it right? Having some type of empathy um, and then responding, or am I just waiting so I can respond, get my point across because, you know, this is how I feel. This is how this made me feel. Communication is everything. And what normally happens if you have two people who aren't great communicators, you never, ever get anything done. So the words may sound good. Um, it may sound intellectually correct. Um, you may have all your facts in order, but nothing really happens if all of the stuff that you're saying never hits the person that you're wanting to speak to. If it never registers for them, right? Um, so communication is huge. So the number one thing that uh, leaders, coaches, teachers, trainers need in their communication is uh, being a great listener. The second thing that makes you a great communicator is your clarity in what it is that you are saying. Now, the thing about being clear about what you want to say is oftentimes we already know exactly what it is that we want to express. Now, this can roll over into your marketing, children, but I ain't going to go there. I'll save that for the academy. Come join us in the academy, right? So when we're talking about communication, we have to make sure that we're clear. And oftentimes we know what we want to say, right? But it doesn't mean that the person reading it or the person that you're sharing it with understands. Now, I mean, I for one don't believe in, I believe that we should make things simple so that people can understand it, but I also believe in doing things that require people to come up, right? So you gotta find a healthy balance um, for that, right? Where people can actually stretch. But our communication is huge and our ability to be clear you know, what it is that we're trying to say and deliver to the other person. So making sure that you have clarity. And the next thing is organization, like organizing your thoughts, because we're thinking 50 to 100,000 thoughts, no, 50 to 70,000 thoughts per day. And sometimes we've already had the whole conversation in our mind before we even got with the person, <laughs> right? We've already had the whole conversation. We've anticipated what they, they're gonna say, we anticipated why they said it, whether we know if that's really why they said it or not. So we've already had a conversation. So it doesn't always go well, and our thoughts aren't always as organized. And the fourth thing uh, to be a great communicator is to be sincere. To be sincere in why you're sharing what you, you're sharing. I, I believe communication should be win-win. The goal, the 
intent before you even begin the coaching call, before you begin the one-on-one -on -one evaluation with the client, if you are a mentor, before you begin mentoring or you have a team that you're leading, uh, the, the space at which you go to communicate should originally be win-win perspective anyway, not just so that you can be heard. Does that make sense to you guys? I hope that helped you guys. Um, we actually have a module inside 3D Success Academy that goes deeper into communication, leadership, uh, things of that nature. It's important. If you're building a big brand, if you want to build a premium brand, these things are, are important. Not everybody desires um, to, to build a premium brand. Not everyone desires to work on themselves. But for those who do and they understand how it impacts their business, I've included those things um, in the academy. Maisha has put it in the comments. How many of you feel that you're great communicators or that's something or an area you may need to work on? Do you feel you're a great communicator or is that an area you feel you may need to work on? Listen, so much of things that have transpired in our life prior can affect our ability to communicate, right? Like if we felt unheard, um, in previous situations and we finally came into being, if we're not careful, we will, um, we won't necessarily, we may be loud, but it doesn't mean that we're great communicators. Does that make sense? Sometimes people who were a little shy or maybe they were in a position where they never felt heard, uh, when they do begin to express themselves, sometimes they're loud but they're not great communicators. And we don't necessarily uh, want to be loud and not communicating, not being a great communicator in what it is that we're saying, we're wanting to say. And then the focus should always be the solution, right? Uh, because sometimes we focus on the problem and not the solutions. And that's when we get into the emotional aspects of everything because it's the problem, the problem, the problem instead of being able to clearly communicate what it is that you are desiring from the person that you're speaking to. That's my take on communication, guys. I just popped in. I had been out in my garden, so I didn't have time to get all camera ready uh, today. But I hope that that blesses you. For those of you who would love to join us, RenewfulCircle.com slash 3DA. It will be the best investment money you can spend on yourself, building not only your brand, but yourself as well. They are intertwined, guys, right? We grow to the level. Our business grows to the level that we grow personally. Yeah, it doesn't like outgrow you. If the business outgrows you, it'll always come back to get you and bring you up to. You guys have a good one.